All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Tuesday Night Special. And now it's time for us to talk about what happened during the second half of Monday Night Raw from Wichita, Kansas. And the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw would, would see the Viking Raiders going one-on-one -on -one against Buddy Murphy and personal CrossFit Jesus, a.k.a. Seth Rollins, better known as Seth Metal Seth Rollins on this programming, for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Team HodgePodge versus a tag team that's been dominant for well over three to four months. Now, usually in this situation, folks, we would say the Viking Raiders had an advantage because even though that AOP was at ringside and the fact that the Viking Raiders brought Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens to help them out with that problem, this match would kick off with not only a hellacious tiger knee right to the face of Buddy Murphy and even an assist power slam, but with the former member of the Shield helping him out to try to get the gold, let's just say the SWAT tactics was just a little bit too much for the Viking Raiders. Because even though you would see Eric hitting the over endo and knee strike combination for a near fall, or just the scream in the face of his opponent, you would even see Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins teaming up together like they've been a team for the last couple of years. Dual power bomb out of the corner, which was absolutely disgusting to eye bar for a near fall, and would even be able to hit a Tiger knee combination for near fall. But ultimately, this match will come to an end immediately after a Viking experience like no other to Buddy Murphy that Seth Rollins would break up, which would eventually lead to another Tiger knee to the face by Buddy Murphy directly into a stomp to Eric on the rope, which looked like a guillotine of sorts, only for Buddy Murphy to pick up the scraps and for the Viking Raiders' reign of terror on the tag team division to come to an end due to a hodgepodge team via pinfall. And I've lost count on how many times Seth Rollins has won the tag team championships, but at this point, it's really, and I do mean really, starting to get ridiculous. I think he's starting to reach big show numbers with the amount of partners he's had that he's won tag team gold with. Which tells you a lot. It really does. And after that bit of excitement from the tag team division that's slowly but surely crumbling underneath our toes, the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw, which would see Eric Rowan going one-on-one -on -one against v one or the broken one better known as Matt Hardy. And during the match, Matt Hardy would try to get a look inside the cage thanks to Eric Rowan beating the living daylights out of him. But when he refused to look in the cage and Rowan would try to get whatever was in that cage out of it, he would get bit once again only for him to take the cage and Solomon Grundy slam it into the steps over and over again screaming bad only for Matt Hardy to take advantage and try to grab him from behind and punch him in the face over and over again for that to fail him to get cross-bodied on the outside of the ring like if Eric Rowan was Mike Knox and then for an iron claw in the center of the ring foot on his chest three seconds later Eric Rowan wins fatality it's over and he takes the little cage up the ramp with him, and nobody still knows what's inside that thing. But I got a feeling it's probably a mogwai, or a gremlin, or a bearded dragon, or some form of creature that is indigenous to whatever sort of twilight zone that he came from. And I'm keeping that guess under my hat, too. And immediately after that bit of madness, folks, the next match to take place backstage while Mojo Riley was getting interviewed would be the Bollywood Boys trying to pin Mojo Riley for the 24-7 championship, only for Mojo Riley to pick up one of the Singh brothers, throw him into a crate, and the other one to get punched in the face as hard as he could, for Mojo Riley to give good two love taps to the 24-7 championship, saying, this belt ain't going nowhere. And yeah, 
like he said last week, he's getting rid of the cowardness of the 24-7 championship, so he looks to hold it for a lot longer than others. Good for him. But I can't wait until R-Truth gets it back. And besides the madness of the 24-7 championship, folks, we now go into the main event of the evening, which I thought was going to be for the Raw Tag Team Championships, but instead, it's an episode of The Young and the Restless, in the form of Bobby Lashley and Lana going one-on-one -on -one against Rusev, and none other than Liv Morgan, with Lana wearing apparently curtains that she found outside of the Golden Nugget Casino, and for Bobby Lashley to reveal the new outfit for Lana, which is now Lana Day, and saying Rusev Day is cancelled, which the fans would still chant it because nobody cares what she says. And during this match, Lana would take every single shortcut imaginable during the set contest by not only holding on to the rope and taking a cheap roundhouse kick to the side of the head of Liv Morgan, but also stopping Rusev at every single turn, actually spoiling his momentum, including a Samoan drop by Rusev that would get spoiled by her saying no! And Rusev falling for an hook, line, and singer to get hit with a dominator for near fall, and would even get his leg caught by Lana right before he was about to do a machka kick right to the side of the head of one Bobby Lashley, which would be the final nail in the coffin for Rusev because Bobby Lashley would come charging out of the corner with a hellacious fear that would take out Rusev during this match, officially canceling Rusev Day via pinfall. And then you would see Lana and Bobby Lashley celebrating in the ring as Liv Morgan and Rusev would make their way out for Raw to end for this week. And seeing the fact that we don't want to end Raw on that note, we almost forgot to mention that not only Samoa Joe, but Kevin Owens would announce their entry into this year's Royal Rumble match for Samoa Joe to say, if you get in my way toward an opportunity to main event WrestleMania, I will go right through you. And then for Kevin Owens to say, I wouldn't see it any other way. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, for the sixth year anniversary, if you're wondering at home for Music Village, we will be breaking down the entire card for this year's Royal Rumble. But until then, folks, I think it's time for us to head back into these musical tunes. And when we return, we'll be back with more of the Tuesday night special than you can shake a streetlight at right after this. So don't hit the blackjack tables just yet, folks, and stay tuned. <laughs> 